I'm going to have to handhold this camera to illustrate this issue. It's time to ream the uh, valve body, or rather, it's time to re ream the valve body from uh, 0.250 over to 0.261 because the uh, 0.25 over was bell shaped or odd shaped or something. So I went to, uh, I decided 0.261 would fix it. So I bought a uh, 0.261 inch reamer. Here it is. All I have to do is insert it in the collet. So you can see the collet. But uh oh, what's happening here? There's no way to do it. I could chop this um, the shank off on this reamer, or I could buy a short reamer. Trouble is, I couldn't find any short reamers except solid carbide reamers. There was, I found a .261 solid carbide reamer and it should be here today. In the meantime, I went out to the home machinist forum where I'm a, a member and said something about the issue and a nice gentleman named Steve suggested I do this. Now this is going to be kind of tough to do with one hand. I'm not sure I can even do it. Hang on a second. I'm going to put the camera down right like this. I'll brace it here on the mill table. Let's see if I can do this. There. I think I'm going to do it. Maybe. Just stay right there. There we go. Brace it on the mill table. I'm going to take the collar out. I'm going to put the reamer in. The collar. I'm going to stick it way up in there. And I'm going to put the collar back in. Voila! Problem solved. Thank you, Steve. I wish I would have read your post before I spent $64.73 on a solid carbide reamer. But that's my fault. Okay, as you can see, the reamer is in place, in, and I've already aligned the spindle with the valve body hole. I uh, used a piece of uh, uh, quarter-inch drill blank to do that. That was shorter than that reamer, obviously. So there you go. Thanks to, to my friend Steve. That problem solved. And I'll remember that trick in the future. Because I always, well not always, but building these engines, which are about six inches tall, I frequently run out of room when uh, trying to Form the reaming operation. Not all the time. I'm just right at the edge of it, of being able to insert a reamer. If it's just under a certain height, the engine, uh, uh, and the height is variable, I don't have to make them as tall as they are, um, then everything's fine. If they're just over, then I'm out of room. And the mill is not small, it's got, you know, it's a pretty good sized mill. If I can back up far enough to get it in the whole picture, get the whole thing in the picture. And there we are. I'm back, backed up about 20 feet, I guess. So, remember that trick. Learning that was um, probably worth the worth the cost of of that uh, solid carbide dreamer. That background noise you hear is my dehumidifier that I it kicks on and off as necessary, so try to ignore it. I need a 0.26 or 0.25 something 
259, maybe 259 plus uh, length of uh, material to create the new valve. Never to save this engine block that uh, had a bad uh, valve uh, body hole. I'm screwed up reaming it somehow at 250 plus. So I reamed it. If you watch the previous, if you watch the previous segment, I reamed it at 0.261. Got a great finish. And all I now, all I need now is a piece of 0.261 uh, steel to use as a valve. Well, you can't just go down and buy a point, piece of 0.261 steel. So I've got this uh, piece of, uh, I think it's 3 eighths, not worth measuring right now. Anyway, I'll turn it down to 0.261, or rather I'll turn it down to fit. What I want is a good slip fit got be almost frictionless, but yet uh, uh, fit in there uh, good enough to be to seal as a valve. So I'll turn this down to do that. I need to support the end of the valve to be so I need to center drill it for the uh, live center Try to get away with it, just a tiny hole for the live center. Because this end of the valve is going to be the end that hooks up to its uh, link to the, the uh, to the eccentric follower link. I think that'll do her. I need to reduce that uh, 3 8 inch piece of stock down to 0.25, maybe something, 259. And I'm going to try to use this neutral handed tool I crowned. I've used it successfully in the past. Give you a little better look at it. Oops, there it is. I'll put a stone to it. I've been uh, using it. I uh, stone everything that I grind. The valve needs to be one and an eighth inches long, so I'm going to reduce a section of this three eighths inch diameter uh, 1018 I think it's mild steel I think to um, I'm going to reduce that length uh, uh, to, uh, to a length of uh, uh, one and a half inches so I can test fit this this uh, valve body over it easily so I'm going to mark the mark my spot here As you can see, I've got my tool extended out a little further than I'm comfortable with. But uh, I'll take light cuts. Hope it, hopefully it won't chatter. 
So back later. Took a little too much, 20 thousandths. Chips are, are blue. I'll back her down to 10 thousandths for the next cut. I'm getting close. I just measured it. I'm at 2758. So I'm going to. I just took five thousandths, I'm going to take another five thousandths, that'll put me at 270. I've got to go down to something like 259, but I want to, I want to ease my way down there. I, I don't mind taking these little cuts. I'm going to make sure I measure the workpiece when it's cold. And it's Pretty cool right now, so back later. Well, I screwed that workpiece up. I misread the mic. It's at 251 instead of 261. So it's too loose. So I'm going to scrap that piece. Fortunately, I've got plenty of this 1018. I did a couple things. I moved the uh, tool bit back towards me about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more, to reduce chatter. That, that helped a lot. And I slowed the surface feet per minute down from 123 to 74. I thought 74 might be a little slow, but it um, made a huge, <clears throat> huge difference in the chips I'm getting. <coughs> I'm getting nice. Uh, uh, bright colored chips now where before I was getting um, these uh, blue chips here's one right here see that blue chip big difference between a blue chip and a silver colored chip so anyway it resulted in probably a longer tool bit life which is not, which is not too important but a better finish less heat generated. So I'm going to take another 10,000, so I'm at 325 right on the money right now. So I'm going to take another 10,000. Taking 10,000 at about uh, something a little bit over 74 SFM. I mean, a little bit under 74 SFM because the diameter is no longer 3 to an inch. It's uh, 3 to 5. 0.325. So as the diameter decreases, the SFM goes down at a set RPM. Probably have to speed it up here a little bit. I'll get back to the calculator and figure that out. I'm still getting a nice chip though. Seventy. 
96, I'm going to take 10,000. I'm happy with that finish in 1018. I just mic'd it at uh, 270. So I'm going to take uh, five, mic it, and then decide how, how many thousandths more to take. I'd like for it to fit at 259. That'd be a good fit, I think. Maybe 259 and a half. I won't, uh, as it gets towards the very end, the mic won't make any difference. I'll start uh, fit with the actual engine block, valve body, and that'll determine how well it fits. And I might uh, have to polish it down with some 600 grit or some emery cloth or something to uh, get the fit I want, but that's not a problem. Uh, 259 6 so here's where the fitting comes in actually I'm going to chamfer edge with the file. Maybe I don't have to. Anyway, here, here's where the fitting comes in. I need to chamfer that edge, obviously. I had this set screw that uh, will become a permanent feature screwed in too far. That's the fit I'm looking for. So, this makes me happy. I didn't have to polish it any. I actually turned it down to the right diameter. So this makes me very happy. It's time to create the the valve itself, something to point with. The head of the valve is an eighth of an inch long. And then our, th there's a section that's reduced in diameter. That section is 0.6 inches long. It's reduced in diameter a um, hundred thousandths. So since this valve is basically 0.260 I will um, make a relief cut here down to 0.160 and come over 0.6 of an inch here and make another relief cut identical down to 0.160 and then I will turn with my turning tool between those two relief cuts I use my dial indicator on the face of the chuck to bring it in 600 thousandths to make that second relief cut. We're at 60 thousandths on the way to 100.
80. I will cut between these two relief cuts with that neutral handed tool. Now it's starting to look like a valve. I'll come down from this shoulder 400 thousandths and chop it off. From here to here is the valve. Of course I'll have some additional work to do here on the mill. I'll have to put a through hole through it for the wrist pin and then slot the uh, slot it for uh, the eccentric follower link. Again, I'm going to use the dial indicator to make this movement. I've already touched off this shoulder with the side of my cutting tool. So I need to move 400 thousandths plus the width of the cutting tool, which is 62 and a half thousandths. It's, it's important to have the shaft of the indicator parallel to the center line of the spindle. And I do that visually, so it could be better, I'm sure, a lot better. So anyway, we're going to do it. 462 and a half thousandths. There's one, two, three, four, and we're going to 60, two. Nice thing about using an indicator is if you go a little bit beyond, you can just back up. You don't have to worry about backlash. Plus this measurement, you know, is not doesn't have to be within a tenth or a thousandth or even probably even ten thousandths. But I, try, I like to try to hit them. So I'm ready to chop this baby off right there. It's really nice. It's got a nice little dimple there in the top for cosmetic appeal as it's moving up and down on the eccentric. We're in good shape so far.